All right, we're back. We're live for the two o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. More specifically, this is Community yeah. Matters. Okay, and today we're talking about the Scouts. And I call this show Onizuka Day Brings Out the Scouts. Indeed, Onizuka Day is the 27th of April uh, at uh, the Blaisdell Exhibition Hall. Okay, and we have two representatives of the Scouts with us today. We have uh, Taylor Mower. He's the executive director of the Aloha Council. Hi, Taylor. Welcome. Well, I am not the executive director of Aloha <laughs> Council, but I am the district executive uh, okay, for the uh, east side of Oahu. But, okay, uh, okay. Well, I mean, I'd he's gladly one of take the many title. executive directors of Aloha Council. <laughs> 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 I'd gladly take the title, so no worries there. Yeah, well, I just, uh, you know, promoted you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, also, we also have uh, Christy Wetzel. She's director of uh, family scouting. She's the only director of family scouting for Aloha Council, am I right? I am the only director of family scouting, yes. <laughs> yes. You ever see Taylor and say hi? We uh, sit pretty close to each other, so okay. sometimes I make my way over to him. <laughs> yeah. Where's your office? Our office is right up the poly, right um, behind Queen Emma's, right on 42 Pu'iva Road, actually. Oh, yeah. yes, Queen Emma, the Summer Palace. Yes, yeah, Summer Palace, oh, right next no, to the Summer I know Palace. I that neighborhood yes. very well, yeah. Good, good for you guys. So um, how, did, how did you get into this, Taylor? I mean, what, what drove you to uh, get into um, the Scouts and be an, one of the many executive directors in Aloha Council? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I was a Scout. I grew up um, in the LDS Church. Um, and so the kind of Scouting was just kind of something we did, and it was part of our program in the church. And so um, my dad was a huge believer in Scouting as well. And so I kind of followed in his footsteps. I'm a third-generation Eagle Scout. Um, oh, that's my next question, Eagle yeah. Scout. <laughs> we like Eagle Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so when I graduated uh, school about two, or th almost three years ago now, um, I kind of took the opportunity, I saw the job posting, and um, figured I should learn more about what a district executive does, and little did I know what I was getting myself into, and so here I am. You yeah. like it? Yeah, it's fun. It, uh, it's something different every day, so something's always changing. We manage a lot of different... Uh, moving parts of the Boy Scouts that most people don't really understand. Oh, yeah. What so goes on. What does an executive director do? Um, so I specifically oversee a lot of the fundraising from our individual troops and PAC, um, as well as community outreach, community awareness, um, as well as the kind of like day-to-day -day operations and programs. So program being events, um, camps that we're putting on. So you're setting up camp. programs. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. And so you I, attend the programs and participate in the programs? Correct. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, all right. Let's go to you, Christy. All right. How did you get into the Scouts? How did I get into Scouts? I did not grow up in the Scouts because I'm a girl, and back then, girls could not be in Scouts. Okay. Uh, at least the Boy Scouts of America program. So I actually, uh, I was working for another um, nonprofit for kids here on the island. It's called Camp Agape. It actually serves... Uh, families of incarceration. So I was a director. It's a of, camp, though. It's a summer it's a camp. camp kind it's, of a, thing? it's a camp, and then it actually has mentoring programs all year round. So okay. similar to Scouts, you have your camp in the summer, but you have things all year round. Okay. And so I was the director of that for several years, and then it was about the time to just take a break from that. And um, I was working a regular job on top of volunteering, and I came. I found the. Um, I used to be a district executive as well, so I found that opportunity and apply. And I saw, I'm like, that's everything I do right now as a volunteer. Why don't I get paid to do it? And so, great thing that, that was, happened. Yeah. yeah, about three years ago. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like it? Yeah, it's great. It's great. You get in the community, and uh, you know, the last the last year we've had a lot of changes. Um, mostly for the female gender, which has been a really amazing opportunity to to provide that to the families that have been wanting it. You're so. offering more of that now. And do you have do you have scout, uh, Girl Scouts that came over? Do we have Girl Scouts that are in our Scouts program? You know, from the from the Girl Scouts. Of from America. the Girl Scouts, you know, I have heard of a couple families who they used to be part of the Girl Scouts and their troop kind of had dismantled and they were not part of scouting, but they wanted to be and their brothers were. And so we have a couple of them that have transitioned um, because they were not part of, I guess they weren't part of the Girl Scouts anymore, but now they are part of our girl troop out in EVA. And I'm um, really excited about that. And they're excited too. So. so family scouting, what is family scouting and how does your job differ from that of one of the many executive directors? 
Great question. So my job differs because I'm a little more focused. He was very humble. He does all <laughs> kinds of things. Like he takes phone calls because you don't know how to do your training to like, yeah, running an event for 500 people. So uh, the director of family scouting, my job mostly um, it's incorporating the entire family. So for the past 109 years, Scouts was only available for membership to be boys. Yeah. But quite often you're a seven-year-old and you have a five-year-old one's a boy and one's a girl, you're taking both of them to the program, but the girl had to sit on the side. So now it's just kind of helping everyone rethink that, like, oh, I can take the girl and she can now be part of the program. She can earn the ranks. She can learn how to use a pocket knife. She can learn how to start a fire just like her brother did. So it's just really trying to retrain our brains that they were doing it anyway, and mm -hmm. now they just get um, accredited for mm -hmm. the work that mm -hmm. they've been doing. So. You know, it reminds me, uh, the, the whole question reminds me of a, um, a, um, a, a friend's son of ours mm -hmm. a few years ago, came an Eagle Scout, and there was a, a big celebration, and it was uh, at a school, and a lot of people came, yeah. and it struck me that the, the parents were there in force. I mean, and I thought, you know, hearing you talk about it and hearing your title seems to me that that's, that's a, an evolution in the Scouts, a, a perceptible sea change where you're trying to draw the families mm -hmm. in, you're trying to right. draw the parents in. The place, where this particular ceremony was filled with parents. Yes. There were, you right. know, like five times parents as children, <laughs> as kids, as Scouts. And so I, I, I say to myself, you know, it's probably a good idea for you to do that. Yeah. How do you it, do that? It's, it's just been awesome because um, the parents don't have to go to different places. You know, the family, they get up in the morning, they go to work, the kids go to school, they come home, and then they're still not home. They're going everywhere. So now once a week they can come together. Or maybe they're going camping. And for our elementary age kids, family scouting, you can camp as a family. You know, when you get older, then the girls and boys, it's not as much, it's still family, but the girls over here and the boys yeah, are over here. they had enough of their parents Yeah, that exactly. Time, yeah. They're ready to leave the parents at home at that point. But, yeah. But it's still great because now the moms who traditionally, you know, once Taylor became 13, 14 years old, the mom had to just say goodbye. While the dad and Taylor, now the mom can stay with her daughter and continue to, you know, and go through the And participate in the yes. program. So yes. when you set up these programs with 500 people and all that, you're, you're trying to get the parents to come down too? Yeah, definitely. So uh, parents are a huge aspect of how our program actually is structured and how it works. Um, all of our troop leaders are volunteers, and they dedicate their time and you know their resources and their talents to the program, which makes us such a cool community um, organization that we literally draw from all aspects of life and all different backgrounds and um, really teach the kids values and um, all that kind of aspects of the program. So it's kind of a cool opportunity to, I like to say, you know, um, whereas you drop your kids off at sports, you kind of just let them be, let the coaches do what they do. This is an opportunity for the family to come together and to go you know, camping together as a family yeah. to oh, yeah. you know, participate in STEM activities together as a family and to do all that kind of stuff um, as a family and really just say this is something we do as a family instead yeah. of, um, you know, this is your activity you go to. So it's, it's really cool. But there's, a, there's another element to it, too, because if you put the scouts together with their families and you put all the scouts and families together in one big group, one big event, then the families are getting to know the other families, right? right. Exactly. So then you have a, a whole network of a community happening where they would not otherwise know each other. Exactly. Know? And there are benefits in that, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, you see it all the time, you know, where kids may have been a little more shy, or, um, and then they see their older brother talking to someone, and then they realize, oh, that guy has a, you know, his older brother's friend has a little brother that's, you know, maybe a little bit shy too, and so then they start hanging out and, you know, the parents get along really well when they see all that interaction. And, um, it's, you know, it's one of those things, scouting is, you know, you're all there to basically help instill values into our community and to our younger generation. And so um, everyone's there kind of for the same purpose. And so it's a really cool experience to see people um, really take that step forward and kind of commit to the community together. Yeah, right, building community. Yeah. It's also building, as you alluded to, it's, it's building confidence, yeah? Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> and, that, and that takes me to the merit badge idea, which is a, you know, 100 years old, the merit badge <laughs> idea. Nothing new about that. However, yeah. there are a lot of merit badges that are, that, that are really very modern yeah. and high technology, mm -hmm. like, appropriate to the Ellison on a Suka day, mm -hmm. because that's all about technology. Um, so uh, I remember I met some 
he was a senior scout uh, last year at the Ellison on Azuka Day, and he had so many merit badges, you couldn't count. He had a sash oh, yeah. of them, yeah. you know, dozens and dozens and dozens. And I know you must be expanding them all the time. So <clears throat> how do you handle that? It must be very hard to keep track of all the merit badges. On the other hand, these kids are having, they're gaining confidence in more and more skills that will be useful for them in the real world or the adult world or the working world, as the case may be. Yeah? Yeah, so I mean, kind of how we sell that, or um, I don't know, way to approach it too, is that we have, I think, over 140 different merit badges currently. Um, and, you know, we're always adding new ones, sometimes taking old ones off, um, and, and, you know, adding content to the actual merit badge program. So each merit badge is designed with a booklet um, of kind of requirements of what they should pass off in order to earn that merit badge. Um, now, I mean, you have everything from wilderness survival to uh, coding and website design mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, engineering to, you know, agriculture. And, and the so, scout decides. Yeah. He, um, he picks the ones he wants. Exactly. So there are some that are required to earn the ranks um, of, you know, of Eagle. So you have to um, do certain ones that require that. But then you have a bunch of electives. Um, and so then the scout this gets to like choose school, all those electives. It? Yeah, it's a little bit about school, but it's a, we're doing it in a way that is a little different, a little different structure. Um, you know, the scout is really has the opportunity to kind of be creative and see what he's interested in. I mean, I, I always approach it, you know, the kid always gets to figure out what he wants to have his major be in college before mm. he gets to go to college instead of wasting his parents' money before he goes to college and doesn't know what he wants to do. <laughs> sure, find out who he is. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of a, it's, it's a really cool and neat program to be a part of and to, to see kids really kind of uh, find that stride once they find something they really like. Um, I mean, what I, was your favorite merit badge? Oh, well, of your 140, we mean. Oh, gosh. Uh, I think <laughs> I have, like, 62 merit badges, actually. Is that right? Actually, you yeah. had what happened to the others? Oh, I... Well, you can't... You, I mean, you could have all the time to do all of them. There are a few people, uh, a few scouts that have done all the merit badges. Um, Is so, that right? So it's a rare fleet, uh, oh, definitely. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, my favorite merit... I was super into sports when I was younger. Um, I still am. Um, so I did a snowboarding merit badge, the water... Mm. Uh, <laughs> Water merit badge. Life saving was a really cool one, um, and I always had the opportunity. You know, I have life saving skills that I actually eventually, later down the road, got to utilize um, because I had that knowledge. I was able to save someone mm -hmm. else's life in the mm -hmm. water. So things like that, you know, you learn along the way that you don't really realize. Most what people what are the get. ones that are required for Eagle Scout? I can tell no, you off the top of my head. Yeah, goes, just <laughs> in general areas. Yeah. So there's like first aid, uh, wilderness survival. Um, and I probably could be saying these wrong, so I'm just going to quote that now. Um, I mean, but you I think have like sustainability, sustainability, oh, that's yeah. Right on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, community service is one of our community uh, outreach, um, civil, civil service, probably a finance um, one, personal management, personal management. Um, Basically, anything that you need to do to live your life yeah. balanced, all of those are included. Physical fitness. Yeah, good, Physical fitness. A good and decent citizen. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. So are, are there different merit badges for the, for the girls? Absolutely not. Same thing. Same thing. Every, same thing. Everything the, the boys can take, the girls can take. Yes. It's and a, they do. It's the exact same program. It's the exact same handbook. They just have words that say she and her instead of he or him. Sure. And well, uh, pictures, everywhere pictures with girls <laughs> instead of boys. So, yeah. yeah. But, yes. So same how program. about the teaching part? Teaching. Sure, surely it's not a matter of just, you know, opening the handbook. Um, somebody has got to actually talk. To the person who wants the merit badge yes. and explain it and te am I right? Are yes. you doing that? Our merit we call them merit badge counselors. Okay. You have all to right. organize them. Do so you do it also? I actually am not a merit badge counselor. I probably could be. Maybe when you're older. But I work enough that I uh, <laughs> just stick to the my job actually. Okay. But, yeah, so the merit badge counselors, you could be one. We have one for radio and um, what would you call this? Communications. Mm -hmm. You could become a merit badge counselor. Basically anyone that has an expertise and wants to serve with there's just once a year you put on a merit badge council session and so that can be um, a merit badge counselor could say hey I'm only going to do this one I can have 15 people and I only want the girls you know or they could have the girls and the boys just like any teaching environment and you train them you counsel with them to make them good merit badge counselors. yeah we make sure they're uh, certified <clears throat> yeah, yes yeah. yes okay. 
How long does it take to get a merit badge? Is that, is that a big, long process? Or? Some of them are very intuitive, and you have to write essays and all kinds of stuff. But you can Other, go at your own speed. Yeah, you can definitely you can go at your own speed. You can take your time if that's yeah. what you want. You can right. take a week. I mean, sometimes, so at summer camp, we have a lot yes. um, that you can earn just within the one week. So you're literally going to, like, classes, kind of like a class schedule you'd normally go to, like in college, where you'd go from period to period. Um, so they, they can earn a merit badge within a week, but a lot of times, um, a lot of the merit badges require, you know, a lengthy time um, for, like, the agriculture merit badge. You know, you're supposed to grow something. Um, so obviously you have to wait for that whole plant to grow in order to pass off that merit badge. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of document it and all those kind of things. So mm -hmm. there's definitely a different timeline for every single one. Um, some requirements are easier than others. Um, it's just how you manage your time and how you, what, what really drives you to finish that merit badge. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah. So girls in Scouts BSA launched February 1st, and by the end of February, I believe the first merit badge that was awarded to, I believe, four girls was actually at Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum, and they received the Aviation Museum. I think there was about 25 of them that went through the entire day packed full, and then four of them were girls. And it was pretty cool because if you look at the picture of all the merit badge counselors that were all there instructing, there were, I think, six girls about my age, you know, in the Air Force and whatnot teaching. But now there's actually four girls that were scouts are able to receive it, not just the boys. So well, this exciting. actually reminds me of my time in the service. Oh, yeah. When you took, right. um, they call them correspondence courses in the Naval Service. Okay. And, uh, you, you selected them. It would help you get promoted oh, to yeah. pick, you know, to, to finish them. And you could do it at your, at your leisure. Um, and there's a lot of reading, but you could also, you know, contact people, contact your peers, and they would help you understand. And, 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 and it brings back the whole point that the, the Boy Scouts um, came out of the military way back when. It was, it was fashioned on the notion of a military. That's why mm. the khaki uniforms mm. and, and these courses and mm -hmm. merit badges, is, it has a flavor mm -hmm. of, uh, of the military. And I, I hadn't thought of that ever before. And whenever I have a new thought like that, I, I feel like I have to take a break. So that's what we're going to do now. All right. We're going to take a short break. <laughs> Christy uh, and Taylor will be right back for more about the 27th of April. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so, so much. much. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Okay, we have Christy and Taylor here from the uh, Aloha Council of the Boy Scouts of America. And uh, during the break, we, uh, we had a revelation here. Taylor brought out his very own belt of uh, merit badges. Am I right? Oh, well, this isn't mine. But yeah, uh, this is one of uh, our scouts that um, actually left it at the, the main office at our... Yours um, would be much bigger. Yeah, mine would be much bigger. No. <laughs> actually, it would be. But <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, these are a bunch of different merit badges here. You have fly fishing. You have uh, firemanship. Um, you have criminal background. Uh, physical fitness. Is that a hamburger? Uh, that is basket weaving. Actually. Oh, basket weaving. Basket weaving. Okay. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> traffic, and then you have judicial system. You got a bunch here. Um, personal management, uh, motor boating or water sports, and uh, you got shotgun shooting, camping, first aid, citizenship of the nation, and wilderness. 
survival. I, I don't think that's it. That's great. And yeah. What's, what's the little wheelie over there? What is that? This is a Pywood Derby car. So this is for our Cub Scout aged youth, which uh, range from five to ten years old. Um, but this one's actually glow in the dark, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> but basically, they race these down a track. They get to build them and uh, kind of shape them and customize them whatever way they want. Actually, get to race them. They're actually going to be doing this at our, our Onizuka Day event um, next week. So um, you got all the finalists from all the Scub, Cub Scout packs around the island. Um, and they're all going to race to see whose is the best. So that's kind of a, what this is, too. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a great segue, actually, Taylor. We want to talk about the Onizuka Day event on the 27th at, uh, at Blaisdell Exhibition Hall. So, um, so you talk about one race car exhibit, but there must be 10,000 race car <laughs> or exhibits, rather, at, at Blaisdell that day. Can you name the other 9,999? <laughs> How many booths do we have? So yes. currently, I think we have 52 scouting booths. Um, and then we have some other outside sponsors that have come in, um, like Hawaii Energy, um, Art, so the transportation system, uh, as well as Wild Tiki. We got um, Kamehameha Robotics. Uh, of course, you have to have robotics. Of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we got a bunch of different vendors. We got, um, pr we have. Uh, Cub Scout Packs is doing like a Magnus flytrap thing, like a homemade Magnus flytrap. Um, the Da Vinci Bridge. Uh, oh, I remember that. That was so interesting. Yeah. You, uh, not everybody can do it, you know. Yeah, it's hard. It's, I mean, it's definitely, you have to understand the physics of it, and you have to set up just right or else it'll all collapse. So it's really cool. We have a bunch of different um, activities for, uh, you know, the family to enjoy and all the kids to get their hands on. Um, with all their STEM stuff, so underwater robots, um, so like little underwater drones. Well, this is heavily weighted toward technologies. That was the whole idea. Yeah, yeah so it's kind of a, a way to branch out into the community and to really share um, with the community. It's kind of like a service event, actually, as the scouts. We say it's a service event to the community to, you know, uh, make it aware what the scouts actually do, not just wilderness stuff, but we also mm -hmm. have a huge sure. emphasis on uh, STEM-related activities. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so that's well, kind of... What this event is for is to celebrate STEM. It's actually the largest STEM event in, in the state. In the country? In the state. In the state. Okay. I wish the country. Well, that would be pretty cool. Coming maybe soon, one day. Coming soon. Cool. One day. So what is Family Scouting do at the Ellison Onizuka Day event? Let's see. What is Family Scouting doing? Well, I know some of the girl troops, actually, since they just started, they're not. some of them will have a booth. Other ones um, are still getting their feet wet and learning how to do that. So they're actually going to be at the recruitment station. We're going to have a mock campsite set up. And they're just going to be talking with families. Most every family, if they have a boy, they have a girl. And they can just share what it's like to be part of a scout as a female. Um, also, the Onizuka, the last two years, it was a themed based on space. It was like a, for astronaut, Onizuka, astronaut. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. this year, the name is staying the same, but the theme is on ocean. And so we are having a lot of different ocean vendors come in. Noah's going to be there Very good. doing an hour presentation. And um, yeah, the so family scouting, I think, will, it's basically just awareness. Um, the girls, Girl Troop 11, which is right out of uh, kind of the Punahou area, Manoa area, they will be doing, they will be our color guard. So they'll be doing the open ceremony. So if you're not doing well, anything with at flags and all the that. flags, oh, yes. Okay. So they've been practicing, you know, and for the past uh, hundred years of Makahiki, you'll be, be there. there. Yeah. All right. And so I just told all the other we have um, six girl troops on the island, and so I just told all of them yesterday, please be there, be sharp, be ready, because you know the media will be there and we wanna represent well. This so we're excited to have the honor to do that. You know, yes. something Taylor said, you know, reminded me that there's, a, there's another element of the family um, approach to this, and that is that even though families presumably know what their kids are doing in the Scouts, to go to this uh, Onizuka Day event will uh, give them a greater level of awareness. Right. They, they go with thousands of others, and mm -hmm. uh, they get to see what all the kids are doing, what all the, you know, the exhibits are, mm -hmm. and now they have perhaps a greater depth of understanding about exactly what the Aloha Council yeah. is doing, yeah. I think, I think so. Since I didn't grow up in Scouts, sometimes it can be intimidating. You know, they have the uniform, they have all the patches, and they have all this stuff. Well, I don't really know if I could fit into that. Really, Scouts is just kids having fun and learning while they're doing it, you know? And so that's what happens. We're going to have a climbing wall, and there's going to be a lot of fun a things. Climbing a climbing, climbing wall? wall? You're, I, I think you're going to be one of the first ones I, up. I, yeah, I used to do that. You used Furthermore, to do that. I used, oh. I used to climb the rope. You're having a rope this you're in year, the, too. Were you in the Marines? 
Um, I know, I was in high school. Oh, in high school. <laughs> you climbed it all the way up. Yeah. So we're I climbed it in an L position. Do you make them <laughs> do that? That's pretty amazing. You're, pretty you're cool. an athlete, you know, you, you stick your feet out in an L position. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, yeah for sure. You're using your arm yeah. strength. Good arm strength, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. so, yeah, it's a free event, and then we're going to have fun, and then there will be tons of education, STEM-related, um, ocean-related, wrapped all around that. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a million things to do, and you haven't mentioned the noise level. <laughs> the noise level. You want to comment on the noise level, Taylor? <laughs> noise level of last year's event? Yeah. Well, I think it was just a matter of a noise level of excitement. I mean, you had <laughs> oh, kids right. literally just <laughs> eyes as wide as you could see, and like just um, kids just really just grasping how much, or how cool technology can be, or how cool math can be, or how cool um, you know, different science aspects it's can all, be. It's all calculated to engage them. Yeah, for There's sure. It's just showing them stuff. Yeah, it's always it's the, always hands on. Hands right. on, come and try this. Let's try that, um, and you learn a lot. Kids learn. Yeah. I, I learned a lot, and I'm not a kid. But then maybe you can learn, you know, things when you're not a kid. Is yeah. It yeah, 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 exactly. I learn a lot. Like yeah. they had a light energy. They had you like pump a wheel and to create, a light turn a light bulb on <laughs> compared to like an efficient light bulb right, or how much right. harder much you have to work. To... <laughs> right, exactly. So it just makes the kids realize this is why I need to move to a different standard of light bulb because it's less energy, you know? Or even like Ben Franklin has been a big sponsor over the last several years and, and they have the stuff original? in their store. The original, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, right, the light bulb, and, you know? yeah, exactly. But it's just like a lot of times you don't think of like, oh, there's science projects, we should go to Ben Franklin and they have a whole booth and a station. You do, I saw them the, last year. Yeah. And I saw Hawaiian Electric there yes. in yeah. force. They yes. were there in force. Yes. I mean, so. it's something every minute, you know, it's like, it's really bristling with activity and mm -hmm. bristling with interest and bristling with kids and bristling with this kind of fun competition sort of thing. It's yeah. a great place to spend the afternoon. Does this help you raise money, by the way? Uh, is this something that's part of your fundraising initiative? Yeah, so definitely. Um, we obviously have corporate sponsors come in and help fund this event. Um, and so it is a, a tactic uh, to use um, and to support our program. Um, but this is a completely free event open to the public. So that's the one thing we, we want to emphasize, too, is that it's a free, um, completely free and open to the public to come and explore and to engage with us um, and for us to teach them kind of what we do and um, vice versa, where we bring outside companies in to teach us what they do. Um, and so um, we have, yes, we have corporate sponsors, but the whole idea of this event is really to just engage the community and to show what, Scouting really does for the community. Well, it is that, according to my experience, anyway. Yeah. It's really totally engaging, and it's very interesting walking through. It's excitement, but it's also excitement that, that touches you, yeah? Yeah. Uh, okay, we have time for uh, closing remarks. Why don't you go first, Christy? All right. I guess face the camera face there. Face the camera. And smile. Right. Smile. Right. Big smile. I guess my closing remarks are, uh, if you haven't checked out Scouting, come out on next Saturday from 9 to 3. Come find me. I'll be at the headquarter location. We'd love to meet you. We can talk about family scouting if you have girls and you just want to know how that's working. Really come out. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. And a message from... One of our executive directors. <laughs> <laughs> District executive, but yes, I'll take the title any day. Um, no, yeah, come out to Onizuka Day. We're excited to have you guys. Um, we're expecting about a crowd of like 12,000. It should be totally fun. We have the space to accommodate that many. Um, come learn about volcanoes. Put your hand, get your hands on, dissect a pig's brain. Um, I mean, you can learn anything from how to build an underwater robot to building you know, uh, Da Vinci Bridge. Um, so a bunch of different things that you can learn how to do. It's going to be exciting and a lot of fun. Um, a lot of noise, but it's all, it's all good noise. It's all good yes. fun. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Uh, thank you, Chrissy. Thank you, Taylor. And thanks to Neil uh, Adabara, who was yes. one of the big forces in putting this together. Uh, thank you, guys. We'll, yes. see, we'll see you on the 27th. See you Saturday. <laughs>